our Bibles to the book. We're going to go ahead and jump right into the scripture, amen? amen. Praise God. Oh, oh yeah, we wow. go. man. Jeez. I know this is some praying going on in this room before we got here. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. I may know he's a covenant keeping God. Yes, he is. Hallelujah. The blessings of the Lord are here. Amen. And when we're together, it says in the place that we gather, that is the place of the commanded blessing. Amen. So thank God we're in that place today. Amen. With everything going on, it's good to be in the commanded blessing with the Lord. Amen. So if you could just turn to Malachi chapter 3. Amen. And I am going to get the background for this message. Amen. And praise the Lord. Amen. Close that. Go back there. Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. My God. I'll tell you what. It's been a long time since I felt like that, man. And I like that. You know, the, actually, the, the last time I felt like that was with uh, Pastor Jeff. Pastor Jeff, when he plays guitar, dude, he's got a super anointing on his life. Amen. And every time, every time he plays, I weep before the Lord. And that was how it was today. The Lord had me weeping before him. Yes. Amen. So it's a lot to, there's a lot of lot of weeping that needs to take place. Yes. Amen. At the same time, there's a lot of joy that comes after. Amen. Amen. So I don't know about you. I had my weeping moment, but now I got my joy moment. Amen. Yes. And I got my, and I got my preaching voice today. So I'm ready to get in and jump in and, and just get the fire of God. Amen. Oh, yeah. Hallelujah. So and so as I, I was preparing the message. The Holy Spirit was speaking to me, and he was giving me bits and pieces of it. You know, I shared this with, uh, with John before. Sometimes he gives you the beginning of the message. He might give you the middle, or he might give you the end. So it's up to you to be able to put it together and to preach his word. Amen. Anybody that preaches knows that. Sometimes what you have is you have a, a whole bunch of preparation for just a little bit of presentation. And you, you just put all your study time into it. But then there's times where Holy Spirit just takes over and you start to just start writing it. And you're, and in this case, I started using the tablet so it makes it a little easier to paste it and move it. And I used to just do notebook after notebook, but I realized that this is just a little bit better. Amen. And I, for the most part, I can navigate with it. Amen. So praise God. How many, how many just men today just something special that God has for us today, amen. And so again, when we gather together like this, and we have a few people in the room, and you'll notice that God is, there's some people that have been moving out and sweeping out. Hey, listen, I'm not in control of that. The Holy Spirit moves those out. But there's such a liberty today. There's such a freedom, amen. That's, yes. that's, where, that's where purity comes into it. People that really have a desire to really walk with God and to yes. seek after the Lord, amen. I, I do have some good news for you. Some of you may not know this or you may know this, amen. Uh, we went out to KOA on Father's Day, which was really appropriate. And we had an awesome time with the Holy Spirit. And two people decided to get baptized. And then, there, there, there's a scripture in Acts where it said, what hinders me from being baptized? And sometimes people put too much formality onto what they do. And it's like, you know what? Let's stick with the moment. Let's jump in while we can. Amen. If the, if the water's ready and it's ready to go, let's just jump right in the moment. And that's what they did. So you guys just stand up, Victoria and Elena. Both of you and Joseph too. Yes, he's going to be doing his next. That's right. So we are just thrilled, you guys, that you guys made that decision. Amen. And I, I, do you feel, did, did you sense a, a change? You feel like, you know, I, it's like it just drops off of you. And you just drown out all those other lovers. And the only lover that you have is Jesus Christ. So that's powerful. Amen. I, I've been hooked up with some other lovers. I was engaged with some things, but, you know, the Holy Spirit said, I want to be the only one. Amen. So Amen. praise God. God bless you guys. So what we want to do is I will, I will prepare some papers for you if you want those papers. And if anybody says, well, I need the certificate. Yes. And then I'll give you a piece of Wrigley's bubble gum that goes with that. So, so we we'll just kind of do it. I know so we did something a, a few years ago, and we didn't really do the paperwork because it was just more, it was more informal than anything else because it's all recorded in heaven. 
And when God records everything in a book, amen, and there's a, there's a book of memorial, and in that book of memorial, the, of the deeds that we do and the things that we do in Christ matter because those things are being recorded. And the things that we neglect to do, those things are being recorded too because God sees everything. God knows everything. Yes. And, and I, think that, I think that kind of, uh, oh, beautiful, look at that. Hallelujah, praise God for refiner's fire. And that's what I want to talk about. I want to talk about the refiner's fire. I want to talk about the fuller soul. So if you could, uh, if you have Malachi chapter 3, stand to your feet and we will read this. Amen. And then we'll get to the, to the preaching. Amen. And then we'll just do it. Father, we do thank you, Lord. Uh, Holy Spirit, we thank you for your awesome presence to be with us, Lord. Oh. Father, if there be any spirit, anything that is not of you, Lord, I pray you deal with it today, God. Yes. Father God, if you just oust it, it will be moved out of the way, moved like a mountain. Yes. Father, we speak to it right now. We speak to those those things that will cause those to stumble, Father God. We speak to those things, Father God, that the enemy try to whisper in our ear, and, uh, and we know that he is the father of lies. Father God, we thank you, Lord, that when you have set over us, and when you have declared over us, and the good report that you have set over us, it's greater, and we have a greater word. We have a sure word because we have the foundational things that you have given us, Lord. So we thank you for it. Father God, now we thank you for your word. We know that your word is already blessed. So we read it in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. It reads like this in Malachi chapter 3, verse 1. It says, Behold, I send my messenger, and he will prepare the way before me. And the Lord whom you seek will suddenly come to his temple, even a messenger of the covenant, in whom you delight, behold, he is coming. Say, he's coming. He's, he's coming. coming. Says the Lord of hosts. But who can endure the day of his coming? This is, this is deep. And who can stand when he appears? For he is like a refiner's fire and like, like a fuller's soap. He will sit as a refiner and a purifier of silver. He will purify the sons of Levi, the, the priest, and purge them as gold and silver, that they may offer to the Lord an offering in righteousness. Amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Amen. So you may be seated. Amen. So Christ is the, is the great refiner. He refines all those that, that, that have devoted themselves to his praise mm -hmm. and are employed in his, in his service. I don't know if you know that you are employed in the service of God. Amen. We're all called. It says uh, that the labor is a few. Amen. Uh, every, everyone is going out into the vineyard, and we're finding that not everybody wants to go out. And in a way, it's probably good because a lot of them really are not anointed to go out for that pur purpose. Amen. And it'll cause a stumbling to other people. But the ones that God has called, Amen. He purifies. He said he, he sits as a refiner. Amen. He is that great refiner. Amen. And as you start to see this tribe of Levi, it says that he, these were designated as spiritual priests. And we are also designated as a royal priesthood. Amen. Because true believers, true Christians, what they do is they, they set themselves apart. Amen. To do service in the sanctuary. Amen. So as we come in, I, I was really just thrown by that was the first time I, I heard that video, but that was, all, that was the Lord that put that video on. I don't like to usually put videos where people are singing. I'd rather have words and lyrics or whatever. That's fine. But man, he, man, he ministered through that. Amen. And each one of us here, amen, has that ability to minister to our neighbor. Yes. Amen. Each, each one of us here, God has put some favor in your life. Amen. He's put something in you, amen, that, that you're employed in the service. He purifies and he purges his soul. So there's a process that's, that's taking place, amen, where he sanctifies us inwardly, amen, and he not only washes away the spots we have contracted from without, but will take everything that is found, amen, inside and he separates it for uh, those purposes that he has because he knows that inside of us sometimes is a lot of corruption. Amen. And the corruption also comes, amen, and you don't know if you're not washed in the blood, you, you, you are still stained. And some of us still have stains, amen. 
And there has to be a cleansing that needs to place that takes place. First we're washed in the blood, then we're washed by the word of God. Amen. amen. So as we, as we preach the word this morning, amen, uh, you will find that you're being clean, amen, with the fuller soap, amen. He's making you pure as gold, amen, whiter than snow, amen. So these things are, are, have, a, have a worth to them, amen. When you have worthless and useless things, amen, those things need to be refined, amen. And we find that there is a value in the service that we have, amen? And he purges with fire and he baptizes with the Holy Ghost. Yes, it says he baptizes with the Holy Ghost and fire. Amen. There, that, that fire goes inside and it just starts to work all that stuff out, man. And it's like the, the reason why you're still not doing it is because you have the baptism of the Spirit working inside of you. Amen. So that when you try to look at it, the Spirit said, you can't look at that. I need to burn that thing out. When you were, when you wanted to go down the street and get that, well, he said, no, you can't have that. Amen. I'm going to burn some things out of you. Amen. Because why? Because the Lord is holy. Amen. And the Lord's holiness and judgment is this refining, amen, this blazing fire, because in one way or another, God is going to get his judgment out of it, amen, it says that judgment starts in the house of God, amen, this is where, where the people are gathered in the house of the Lord, but it also says that this is the place of the command and blessing, amen, so a lot of people won't come, amen, to the house of God, because they know that their, their deeds are manifested, amen, and some people will come and just start to manifest even here in this house, amen, yes. and, and we're, we're, again, we're called to be those, uh, those uh, people of God, amen, we see the fuller soap, and it's, it's, it's a type of a bleaching agent, amen, and there's an idea of standing before the Lord, amen, which is associated with, with, with standing and standing up to, Amen. When you understand, you under, you stand under. Amen. When you have an understanding of the things of God, somebody said, well, it says lean not on your own understanding, but there are things that God has given us to understand. And God has given us proofs for what we believe. He's given us evidence for the things that we say we possess. Amen. So, we, so if you go around saying you possess it and it's not showing in your life, then there's a problem. Amen. It's, we said that everything comes out of our connection, how we abide in the mind. Amen. Amen. Come on, somebody. Amen. But, but sinful human flesh, amen, when you think about sinful human flesh, this flesh has no strength. It has no right to resist the Lord and his glory. Amen. So when the, when the glory of the Lord starts to manifest, the flesh has to just start to decay and walk away from it because it doesn't have no power to stand in the presence of God. Amen. And this is why people will get fidgety and, and move around the room or walk out or, or to leave and say, well, I can't, I, I can't take it. It's too much fire going on up in here. Amen. But, but the truth of the matter, when you look at Malachi, what it's, what it's, what it's really saying, in its implication, is saying that no one will be able to stand in the day of the Lord. Why? Because every stain of sin will be there. Amen. But we understand that in the presence of God, the stains are scrubbed away. They're washed, washed away. They're wiped away. Amen. When, when Jesus washed the feet of his disciples, he took a, a linen cloth and he wiped away their feet. Amen. He cleaned them up because they had been going from this place to that place. And you guys know the story of Peter. And Peter was like, hey, he's like, uh, you know, you, you can't do this. You can't wash me. And he said, if, you, if I don't wash you, you don't have a part with me. That's right. That's right. And a lot of people are trying to do church, but they're not washed. Hallelujah. Because they don't understand that the word that God gives is a word that's for you. Sometimes you say, well, that word is for somebody else. No, the word is for you. That's right. Amen. Amen. Well, God is working something in you. You're already washed in the blood. You can claim the blood of Jesus. But we need to, we need to just keep on getting cleaned up, man. Because we get, we get polluted. We get stained. Amen. Uh, we, we get this stuff on us. Malachi reminds us that all this part that we have and, and everything that we do is, is in preparation for the day of the Lord. Amen. And then when the Lord comes back, he says he's coming back soon. He is coming back. Behold, he is coming, said the Lord. Amen. So if the Lord is coming back, then we, we need to be in a place of preparation. We need to be prepared for what, what it is. And how is that done? We're doing what's that done? Well, that's done by sanctification. Sanctify me, you, you are set apart for the things of God. You have made him Lord of over all. Wow. Amen. And, and gathered together and feeling the effects of each other's uh, feelings, the 
Well, this is great. Amen. And we're getting cleaner. We're getting stronger. Amen. He's forming new and unbreakable bonds with each one of us. So this is important that we, we understand the work that he's doing as he puts us together, as he knits us together. Amen. We have an unbreakable bond. Amen. He, these are the ones that are with us. These are not the ones that were with us and that went out from us. Hallelujah. Because he said the ones that went out from us were never with us. Never with us. Amen. But you'll know the ones that are with you. It says because the sons abide in the house. Amen. Amen. But Malachi, he introduces us into broader terms to this process, which is the faithful every generation must endure as we are being prepared for a face-to-face -face encounter with our God. And some people already in this hour, there are those that have, that have gone on to, to glory, to, to, to a face-to-face -face encounter with their God. And I pray that it is the God that we serve, the God of the Bible, but if it's not the God of the Bible, then they're in hell's flames and in bondage because they chose the God of this world. Amen. And the God of this world, hallelujah, is not the God that we serve. It's God that we serve. His name is Jesus. Amen. You call him Yahweh. You call him what you want. Amen. And his name is Jesus Christ. Amen. So, so what we have is we have an exposure that's taking place. Amen. And when we are exposed to holy fire, that heat, and the light of God's truth. Amen. And in that truth and in that fire is justice and love and refining and cleansing. Amen. And all these things come to purify. Amen. So this is this is what he, Malachi was talking about. Amen. So if you get it, say we get it. We get it. Yes. Some of us have an understanding of the process. Say if you get it, say we get it. Amen. If you don't got it yet, you'll get it in a moment. Amen. But but listen, if we leave it. Amen. Well, we could miss the important parts. Amen. So consider what happens when when silver and gold are truly refined. When 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 silver and gold are truly refined, there is a polishing that takes place. Amen. We don't come to the Lord polished up already. What God does is He takes it, He refines us, He cleans up, and then listen, then we shine for God. Then there's a polish. Hallelujah. It says that when He refines it so good that He can see His face in it. The, the vessel, amen, We're, we are those vessels called vessels of honor, not dishonor, amen, so when he starts to put that shine up, you can just bump it up and say, oh, I see myself in you, hallelujah, praise God, that's a reflection, amen, and truly, this is true, because even we're told, and we're challenging scripture in the book of James and all the places, it says, look into that, look into that, that mirror, amen, look into that law of liberty, hallelujah, well, you know, you know, you check yourself, and you make sure you look good, in the mirror, amen. But this is saying something about check yourself and see where you are in your law of liberty. Yeah. Hallelujah. Because when you got liberty, that, that freedom looks good on you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That gift of oh God looks good on you. Hallelujah. And that's how you know you got haters. Listen, if you ain't got no haters, you ain't doing nothing, amen. You ain't saying nothing. It's like my daughter said when they were cooking the food. She said, Daddy, you smell anything? I said, I don't smell nothing. She said, well, they ain't doing nothing. I said, well, when you cook smell the barbecue. Right. Amen. But I don't know about you, but when you're, when you're doing the things of God, there's already a, an aroma, a fragrance of Christ that is on your life. Amen. But, but the only way that fragrance comes to you is that when you die to yourself. Hallelujah. There's something that happens with the fragrance and birth. Well, I came to preach. Amen. And the closer we come, the clearer the view becomes. Amen. As we get closer to it, the view becomes more so we can see that, that he and he's saying, wow, I see a divine image, amen? And he's saying that divine image is me. Hallelujah. The Lord, is, the Lord can surely say that of you, amen? And what we find in, in, in the implication of what we see here, amen, is, is this thing called the cycle of life. Amen. You you can put any type of uh, way you want to uh, do your cycle. You can put one at the top, one at the bottom. Amen. But, but for the sake of uh, the message today, I want to talk to you about uh, what is a cycle. Amen. A cycle is a series of events that are regularly repeated in the same order, of course, of events of operations that reoccur regularly and usually lead one back to the starting point. 
So, so a cycle of life can be a good thing or a cycle of life can be a bad thing. Amen. And sometimes what people are doing, you're still going around the same thing. And you're going right back to the starting point. Somebody with addiction goes out, goes around it, and they end up back on addiction, back in drugs, back on alcohol, back at that place of suicide, back at that place of depression. Amen. But God has given us a liberty, amen. And, and, and the fire comes as a process. And the fire is so awesome because it just doesn't melt the substance, but what it does is it takes away all the impurities, amen? And the fire is, is intended to, to not so much to, to, to punish us or, or to put us down. Instead, the fire is for a restoration, amen? The fire is for a replenishing. Hallelujah. I don't know about you, but every time I come in, I need a replenishing from God. Amen. I walk over there, and I'm done. Listen, the Bible says don't make a show of the flesh. We're not here to make a show of the flesh. But I know where, my, where I need to be. I need to be on my knees. And right there, I get down, and I say, Lord, I came so that you can replenish me, that you can restore me, God. Hallelujah. Because I just picked up some dirt along the trail. I picked up some stains along the way.